Hey, my fellow YouTube YouTubers. Um, got a different video here for you today. I know that um, I've demonstrated this S50 quite a bit along with my other um, electrically heated PM Research plant. But I am making adjustments as I go. Um, today I polished all the brass pieces on this engine, which took about three hours of uh, just rubbing the pieces against scotch Bright until I get it just right. Uh, pieces were heavily oxidized, but um, I don't know. I, I, I really enjoy this hobby and uh, just keep finding little ideas and things like that and make it, make it better. I'm a perfectionist and it keeps me busy. But anyways, this video is going to be a startup and um, a run and a shutdown and then cleaning the engine up and oiling it and all that kind of stuff. So um, I will go ahead and get started on that. So let's, let's get going here. All right, first step here that I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, I use this water pitcher um, it heats water and boils it in a matter of minutes so much it's so handy to use if you have a um, solid fuel burned engine or gas burned engine as it will less uh, use less time and fuel to heat your water up so i'm gonna go ahead and get that started on the boil it only takes a minute or two You can see the light on, I believe. Yep. So while that's boiling, I get the engine ready here. So I'm going to take off the water plug here. Uh, not the water plug, the safety valve. <laughs> uh, there's currently no water in here, so I always drain it. So that way I can pour the hot water in and it's completely hot. We'll go ahead and stick the funnel up there. And I'll go ahead and get the engine oiled. Now, I already oiled the cylinder. Um, this design that I made does not have an inline oiler. Um, don't really like the way they look in my eyes, but perhaps on one of the next engines I build, I may integrate an oiler in. But when I shut the engine down previously, um, all I do is remove this exhaust line, and then I open both of these globe valves and pull off the safety valve on the boiler, and then I inject a few drops of steam oil in there and run the engine in reverse. By doing that, it pushes oil into the cylinder. So the cylinder's already oiled, but I need to oil all the external parts. So let's do that and uh, we'll get going. All right, water's still heating up. Um, I'm using three in one oil for the external parts that don't touch any steam. So I put a few drops in these oil cups right here. Right here. I put a little bit on the crosshead. I put a little bit on the crank arm and the crank where that joins. And it looks like our oil cups for the bearings are already full. I just put a drop of oil on top of the eccentric sheath. And then I put a drop on the eccentric arm uh, bearing. Also make sure the governor's oil, which it is. And I'll put a drop of oil on the gears. So we're pretty much oiled up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and move on to the next, the next steps. All right, now that our water's boiling, we're gonna go ahead and pour the water in slowly through the funnel. And I'm gonna keep an eye on the uh, window, window glass. I know that it needs at least three of these funnels before it really shows up in the window. So I'll go ahead and do the first one. Second one. Third 
And I like the window to be about 75% filled for the top to get the longest run time. Okay, we're about halfway now. One more of these should suffice. Yep, 75%. All right, so that's full. We go ahead and remove our funnel and we'll go ahead and put on the screw cap or the, I keep calling it a screw cap, the safety valve, which by the way, guys, before I move on, I made this tighter so that um, it doesn't pop off till about 25 pounds to 30 pounds, so. Tested that as I have a pressure gauge. The original Jensen uh, safety valves from factory pop at like 12 pounds. It's just not enough pressure. So, um, anyway, so I have a Bix burner here. Much preferred over solid fuel. Solid fuel can't really be burned indoors, and I play around with these too much to do that. Um, so, one thing I will note about these Vicks burners, make sure that you use these in a well-ventilated area. So if you're doing them indoors, have a fan nearby, preferably an open window. I am in a room that has pretty good circulation and a fan, which I will turn on here in a moment once I get the fire started. I placed the Vicks burner pretty center, centered uh, just to make sure that it's getting the right heat distribution. I'm gonna go ahead and get my trusty torch lighter. Great little tool that I also use for um, soldering things. And we'll go ahead and turn our gas on. We'll go ahead and light it. Get a puff. Now I peek at the burner until I see nice little triangles right above the Bix burner. And that's how I know it's burning good. We really want blue flame. We don't want yellow flame. Blue is hotter and it doesn't scorch your ceramic in the Bix burner. Uh, while that heats up, I'm going to turn the fan on and I'll be back at you here once we get up to pressure. All right, we're coming up to pressure pretty quick here. We're at 15 pounds. I usually open the steam line uh, right around 20 to 25. I'm going to go ahead and add a drop of steam oil just on the uh, piston rod here is to lubricate that. Probably already well lubricated, but you can never have too much oil. Well, you can't have too much oil, but you know what I mean. All right, we're at 20 pounds. I'm gonna open her up around 25. All right, 21. 22 and a half. 23. We can go ahead and crack it open now. All right, you can hear the hiss as the steam goes and warms the line. Which creates quite a bit of condensate in the line. All right, we're gonna go ahead and crack the um, valve open to the engine. Usually hear a little pop as the metal kind of expands. And right now I'm clearing the condensation from the engine, which is going into the chop pot here. You probably see the water moving through the line. There we go. All chop pot's kicking in as it clears the condensate from the mechanism. Right now, I'm holding it 17 and a half PSI. This engine has a lot of power. I can run some pretty big accessories on it, but I can go ahead and demonstrate the speed right now and go bubble out for a moment. much power. I don't like to run it that fast too often. But. So 
see how the whistle sounds. Now, when it's high pressure, I have to move this whistle up a little bit. Whistle's working great. I'm not going to keep you guys for this entire run here. Uh, the boil will last about 15 minutes, so I'll come back when we're about to shut her down and go from there. <laughs> All right, guys, about ready to shut her down here. All right, so let's go ahead and kill our flame. Turn off the gas. We'll let, go ahead and open this up to get rid of all the pressure in the boiler. Pressure's gone. I'll close my valves. And from here, the next steps are pretty simple. Um, basically, we're gonna go ahead and drain the boiler. We're gonna remove the condensate from the chuck pot and we're gonna re-oil the engine. And that's the shutdown. So let's go ahead and first uh, pull off the safety valve. A little bit of, just a little bit of pressure, about a pound coming out. All right, safety valve is open, so let's remove that. And what we're going to do is we're going to open our, uh, open our drain, or not our drain, but our steam line. And we're going to open our throttle control. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this uh, rubber hose from the chuff, from the uh, condenser and the chuff pot. And I'm going to go ahead and remove my exhaust line. So what I do is I just hold this and kind of twist this around until until it comes off. Okay, that's been removed. Now again, both valves are open and it's able to breathe through the boiler. So I'll go ahead and put about two drops into the exhaust port. One, two, and I'm gonna spin the engine in reverse. And you'll see steam coming out of the boiler, which means that it's sucking in air through the exhaust, which is what you want to get uh, steam oil into the cylinder. Just do this a few times. That's it. And go once forward. I put the exhaust back on. And line it up kind of perpendicular or square with the other pipes. And then I go ahead and stick my, my hose back onto the nipple of the condenser. She's oiled up. Next step is I'm gonna, this is a syringe that I use to remove water from the condenser because I have it bolted down. So it's just easier instead of having to unbolt it. So um, this is strictly for the condenser because it's oily. Oily chuff water, or as you should say, waste water. <laughs> Call it chuff water. Stick the tube down into the condenser and just start oh should sure i get some there real good there we go look 
looks like we accumulated about 30 milliliters. I'll go ahead and dispose of that into an empty plastic bottle. Oily water. Now let's get my clean syringe to remove the water from the boiler. Because remember, on a gas-fired boiler, we want to put hot water in there. So the next time I fire it up, that water in there that will be cold, and it'll take longer. So I always remove any residual water, which there's going to be quite a bit because I didn't run this boiler complete for the purpose of this video. So there's probably going to be quite a bit of water in here. Yeah, that's 150 milliliters right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this, because this is distilled water, so I reuse as, as long as it's clean. Put it back into the... Uh, coffee pot. Let's see if there's any more in there. A little bit. Okay. That's good enough. Stick that back in here. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll put the screw back onto the condenser. This can be a little tricky. Here we go. That's back on. I'm going to close my valves. Close this one. And we're pretty much all set. Now, if I wasn't going to run this again for, I would say, a week or more, I would completely oil everything up again externally so that it doesn't rust. Um, but I probably will run this again in the next couple of days. So. Um, Make sure your gas is off, obviously, at all times. You don't want any residual gas. And that's about it. Put the safety valve back on there, but I, I don't screw it down because the boiler's hot and it'll create a vacuum and, and sometimes it's really hard to remove the valve next time. Um, there's no residue or water to really clean up this, this time around. Occasionally I'll just kind of clean up a little bit of oil on the engine. Now there is a little bit. I suppose I could grab a Q-tip to clean some of this extra, extra oil. Yeah, that's quite a bit. These Stewart engines can be quite expensive, especially when I built this hybrid plant. Um, so take care of it, and it'll last a long time. Keep it well oiled and clean and don't abuse it and it will run and it will keep running. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this complete tutorial. Most of you probably already know all this stuff, but it's just kind of fun to watch these videos. Uh, I enjoy watching other people's engines and uh, how, they, how they do all their startups and runs. So uh, that's it. Hope you enjoy. Take care. Feel free to subscribe and comment if you have any comments. Thank you.